Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the subtotal function in Excel to give you much more flexibility in creating dashboard reports. By the time I finish this lesson in the eight, next eight minutes or so, I think you will agree with me that using the subtotal function in Excel gives you much more flexibility than creating traditional subtotals. Let me illustrate. Over here I have a data set and I have applied filters. We can apply filters by going to the data tab on the ribbon in Excel 2007, Excel 2010 and clicking on the filter command. Notice over here that in cell E4 I've used the subtotal function. So I've created a subtotal function outside of the traditional data set. Now watch what will happen with the result of the subtotal function when I filter my report. So rather than seeing a sum of the sales for all of the products, what if I wish to see a sum of the sales for only one product, in this case business software. So my filter is for business software. Now the subtotal function gives me the total for the filtered result in contrast to using the sum function which will filter all of the records. Now I can further define this by going through and I say I want to see um, a filtered report for two fields. So in this case I want to see it for January, February and for business software. The subtotal function allows me to get that nice, neat, flexible dashboard report. All right, for right now, let's remove all of the filters in the filter dropdown. So if I happen to be on the data tab of the ribbon, I can see that the filter command is shaded. Let's toggle that off. Now let's come over to another tab and let's take a look at a traditional subtotal. So here I've created a subtotal and if I look at it in outline level number two, I have a nice report. And also notice that it's using the subtotal function over here. Now, many people will say, well, what's this number nine? I'm going to explain that in just a second. So if I expand this level, notice that what I'm getting, oh, let me click out of here first and then expand this level. The subtotal number nine for accessories is saying I am uh, creating a subtotal for just this range of cells. All right, let's remove the subtotal data tab on the ribbon, subtotal, and in this case what I want to do is remove all of the subtotals. The first gotcha step in creating a traditional subtotal is there's probably a good chance that your records are not sorted in the order you wish for your subtotal. So in this case I just created a sort for descending level of sales. Now a subtotal requires you to say which field do I want a subtotal on? In other words, where there is a break-in. Do I want to see when there's a break-in the month? Well, I'm going to get a terrible report here or the product. So in this case, let's do the subtotal at each change in the product. So with one cell selected in the product field, let's sort in ascending order. So now when I create my subtotal, when Excel finds a break in the values in this field, it will give me a subtotal. With one cell selected, data tab on the ribbon, subtotals. And in the dialog box, be sure that you select the field that you just sorted on. So in this case, it's product. Now, there are a total of 11 different functions. The sum function is the default function. It is the most popular. And in this case, I want to apply the sum function to the sales field. Click OK. And there you go. And when I collapse it, there's a nice neat report. But remember the gotcha step, of course, is that you first have to sort the data. Now, let's come back here and take a look at how this number 9 comes about. Why do I use subtotal 9? What's this all about? I've created a nice neat uh, table over here for you. Remember I showed you that there are 11 possible functions that we can use with subtotals. So average, count, count A, max, min, product, and sum is the ninth in order sorting alphabetically. So when we say equals subtotal function number 9, it's because sum is ninth out of 11 when we uh, sort the list in ascending order. Now, a little later on in the lesson, I'm going to touch briefly on function numbers that are 100 plus. 
this is a development that was introduced in Excel 2003. I'm going to touch briefly on it in this lesson, but I've decided to make this a two-part lesson, so I'll go into greater detail on this in part two. All right, now let's come back over here. So I have my subtotal over here for the sum. What if I want to have a subtotal using the average function? Remember from that list that average uses function number one because it's first in the list alphabetically. So I'm using Excel 2010 equals subtotal. And this is a new feature that was introduced in Excel 2007, function autocomplete. And I really like this. So instead of guessing or trying to remember which number is average, it is number one. I can just choose this. I use tab and then put a comma in there. Now I've already created a name range called sales, so I'll use the keyboard shortcut F3 and I'll select this name range called sales, click OK, finish this off, and control enter. Now the real beauty comes about when I use a filter. So if I don't happen to be on the data tab to click the filter, well, let's say I'm on the home tab. Here's a great keyboard shortcut, control shift L. So control shift L is a toggle. It works in Excel 2007, it works in Excel 2010. It's a toggle to turn on the filters or Control shift l to turn them off. So Control shift l And now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to see the subtotal for the filter results using the sum function, the subtotal using the average function for the filtered results. So in this case, I'm going to deselect all, and I'm going to choose Computers and Networking. Click OK. And there is the sum of my filtered results. It is also, the, using the subtotal function, the average. And again, remember that I could go through and filter on multiple fields. So if you've ever even thought about using some ifs or some ifs or some other areas of advanced filtering, I really recommend that you explore the possibilities that you have using the subtotal function. Now, again, I can use Control shift l to remove not just the filter dropdowns, but all the filters that I have in place. Now, let's apply one more subtotal function over here. Remember that in alphabetical sequence, count, which is to count the numeric values, is number two. So I want to create over here equals subtotal. I use the tab key, and remember, count is function number two. Tab comma and what I want to apply this to is a count of sales. Click OK and there you go. I'll do the right parentheses, control enter. So there are 30 records total in here and here is the sum of all the records when I apply the filter, data tab on the ribbon, filter and in this case what I want to do is I want to see the sales for business software as well as graphic design software in the month of March. Click OK and there you go. The subtotal 9, 9 is in ascending order the ninth of the 11 functions. Average is the first alphabetically of the 11 functions. Count is alphabetically number 2. So I have a nice neat report. Now let's remove all the filters. I mentioned uh, briefly that I would touch on the difference with the uh, functions plus 100. The functions plus 100, in other words, 1 plus 100 is 101. This was introduced in Excel 2003 for applying it to a list in Excel 2003 for tables in Excel 2007, 2010. But notice the key is over here, includes hidden values, ignores hidden values. So let's come over here and what I want to do is use equal subtotal 109. Equal subtotal. And in my drop down, I want to come down here into the function number plus 100. I want to choose function number 109. Tab, comma, F3, which is the uh, keyboard shortcut to bring up the name ranges. Click OK, click OK. Now notice that even when I apply a filter over here, so if I want to filter seeing just the records for computers, click OK. Both numbers are the same. But watch what happens if I manually hide a row. So in this case, I'm selecting a row, right mouse click, and say hide. 
now you'll see that there's going to be a difference there will be a difference let, let me bring back all of the records here and you'll really see it so select all and what I want to do is I want to hide a record so I'm going to actually select two records uh, two rows and say hide and now you see the difference so some using the numbers under a hundred includes the hidden records some using the 109 the, the 9 function plus 100 gives me the subtotal but it excludes those hidden records so I'll continue this in part 2 for right now you've learned I think some valuable tips for why you should use the subtotal function rather than creating traditional subtotals and I'll look for you in the next lesson